Joe Biden's a legend in his own mind and doesn't think he's going anywhere. It's not like he lost his fastball. He never had one. He's already a lame duck, the most unpopular president of all time, and he just caught COVID. More on that in a moment. In a new Quinnipiac poll, 71 percent of Americans are against Biden running for a second term, with more than half of Democrats saying he's got to go. With friends like that, who needs enemies? Because those numbers are awful. His own team's telling him to go home. But can you blame them? Everything's expensive and more dangerous. The country is a mess. The first lady just called Hispanics tacos, and that was after Hispanics started ditching the president. Only 19% of Hispanics approve of the job Joe's doing. And only 21% of millennials approve. And Joe's policies are crippling black Americans. I think for uh, African-American voters in particular, there's a special heartbreak because, first of all, the pain is more intense. Uh, you know, the, the rising uh, gas prices, food prices, it's really walloped the black community in a particular way. And But the hopes were so much higher. And so you have a community that came out in huge numbers in 2018, huge numbers in 2020, expecting things to get a lot better. And instead, economically at least, it didn't come true. It, it got worse. And so you're going through a summer now of real heartbreak with black voters. The polls show that. And uh, I think Biden's got to take it very seriously. So Joe's base is toast. But who do the Democrats turn to? They have a pretty weak bench. Bernie Sanders is a socialist. He's lost twice. Mayor Pete's too short, kind of nerdy, and has a weird last name. And Kamala Harris, well, do I even need to get into that? And Gavin Newsom might look good playing president, but he's not smart enough. So if not them, who? Michelle Obama, coincidentally, is reappearing hitting the airwaves to push her new book and tell us how awful America's become. A lot has happened. We've seen a global pandemic. We've seen an insurrection, uh, a rising tide of hate and bigotry and intolerance and a whole lot more. I've, I've spoken to a lot of loved ones, many of you, about what we all seem to be facing. And what has resulted from that process is actually my new book, it's called The Light We Carry, and I think of it as a kind of a toolbox. Is Michelle saying she has the tools to fix the problems plaguing America? Well, it certainly sounds like it. Why else would she be writing a new book? She doesn't need the money. And this book seems awfully political. Michelle's last book sold 17 million copies. It wasn't as good as How I Saved the World, but, you know, people seem to like it. Let's just say she did really well in the royalty department. And that's on top of the $65 million book deal her and Barack signed for their memoirs in 2017 and the podcast agreement they inked with Spotify for 25 mil before jumping ship to Audible since they couldn't be seen in the same room as Joe Rogan. Or, you know, their Netflix production pack that could earn them up to $50 million just for some boring documentaries. So with all these deals, I don't think Michelle's writing a book for her bank account. One of the questions I get asked a lot by fans or by friends or conservative family members, my in-laws, obviously, is, can I reach across the table and punch Geraldo in the face? But the second question I get is always, do you think Michelle Obama's running for president? I don't know if people are scared of her or if they're just curious, but would Michelle Obama be a formidable presidential candidate? Well, she burst onto the scene in 2008 with her husband, Barack, and she immediately stuck her foot in her mouth. But what we've learned over this year is that hope is making a comeback. It is making a comeback, and let me tell you something. For the first time in my adult lifetime, I'm really proud of my country, and not just because Barack has done well, but because... I think people are hungry for change. After that comment, the Obama campaign sidelined her, and she didn't say much afterwards. But hey, at least she's not under federal investigation for money laundering, like the Biden family. And what was one of Michelle's pet projects as first lady? Well, she regulated school lunches, remember? Just as we no longer smoke or drink when we're pregnant, just as we no longer let our kids ride their bikes without a helmet or sit in the back seat of the car without a car seat, 
Today, we know that we can no longer let our kids eat whatever they want. We're issuing new school wellness guidelines to help build healthier learning environments for our kids. But the students didn't really like what Michelle was serving. I do bring lunch every day. You do? Why? Because I hate the school lunches. I don't really like the whole school lunch food that much. I have tried a lot of their things, and I hate them all. It tasted like it was like a giant plastic hot dog. Can you describe their meat? Chewy, um, taste bad. All of those students are now registered Republicans. They never forgot. She did do something that Primetime agreed with. She tried to get kids to exercise and eat more vegetables. Do you know mm -hmm. how you say broccoli in Spanish? Yeah. How do you say it? Broccoli. Broccoli. <laughs> <laughs> That's excellent. Well, these are all good foods, and we're going to help kids learn to love all the fruits and vegetables. In fact, yeah. we actually have many of these fruits and vegetables growing in our White House kitchen garden. Yeah. Let's get it done. Let's I move. Let's move. Let's move. Let's move. Maybe if we'd all eaten our veggies and moved around more, COVID wouldn't have hit us as hard. And she loved her little White House garden. It was where Barack used to go out and sneak a cigarette, but it was cute. But then Melania came in and moved some cabbages around, and Michelle got really angry. And it wasn't the first time Michelle got angry at another first lady. Remember when she took Hillary down a peg in 2008? One of the things, the important aspects of this race is role modeling what good families should look like. And my view is that if you can't run your own house, you certainly can't run the White House. Can't do it. Ooh. How do you say Lewinsky without saying Lewinsky? That's how. And that's not a bad line of attack against Joe either, if you know what I mean. So does Michelle have what it takes to run for president? What's stopping her? Maybe it's her hatred of the White House. We're in the White House, and when you're in the residence, there's so much bulletproof glass that sometimes you don't hear what's going on outside. It's not that easy to get out of the White House when you're in it. I'm just thinking, I'm going to walk out. So we go to the door, and the door is locked. And they're like, uh, ma'am, where are you going? I say, I'm going out. And they're calling in more people. She's trying to get out. She's trying to get out. <laughs> So she's not a fan of the White House. When she was there, race was on her mind. I wake up every morning in a house that was built by slaves. And, and, and I watch my daughters, two beautiful, intelligent black young women, playing with their dogs on the White House lawn. If Michelle did run for office, does she know anything about policy? I'm not trying to put her down, but what is Michelle Obama's position on Chinese tariffs? Does Michelle Obama think we need to break up big tech? Michelle, tell us in detail how your corporate tax policy would affect the deficit. Would we be getting a younger female version of Joe Biden who just gets put in front of a teleprompter and told what to say by advisors? Would Barack Obama, the first gentleman, be running everything? And would Hillary be so upset that Michelle broke the glass ceiling that she'd do what the Clintons do? It opens up a lot of interesting scenarios because many people are saying it looks like Michelle Obama could be making plans for 2024.